So we have been talking about uh, these automation rules and uh, what all you can do with these rules. And uh, one thing that I wanted to talk, wanted to talk about is uh, triggering these rules uh, manually. Now, when you create a new rule, you basically have to uh, configure a few things like uh, the trigger and uh, condition maybe, or what you want to do. So basically you have these three things and we also discussed uh, the branch rule. Now, what if you want to run this rule manually? So people who are uh, uh, following uh, my Scriptner videos, when you're using Scriptner, you have console, both on server and cloud, which is great because you can copy and paste the script and you can run it. You can do, I mean, this, I mean, I mean, you can do a lot of things with the console. You can, I mean, I'm talking about Scriptner, but just to share and try to relate. So basically you have to uh, write something uh, and you want to test it. You, you have written a script, you want to test it first. So you can do it in console. Maybe you want to do some ad hoc activities. So you can all do that from the console. But there is something similar on automation uh, rule. Now when you define a new rule, you can also select this uh, trigger called manual trigger. Now the way it works is actually very simple. You can actually select this uh, trigger here a manual trigger and if you want you can limit it to maybe just a Jira administrators or a group of people which is always good and save it now you have this manual trigger that you can trigger manually and we'll we'll take a look at it how to run this rule but we will first do something so let us say when you do something when you so basically what happens uh, when you go to the issue you will get one option called uh, run this rule and uh, you can then run the rule run this rule now when you execute it manually, when you trigger it manually, you can uh, do something like, uh, let us say you want to uh, create another issue or maybe you want to create, uh, what else? L let us say you have a subtask. Let us create a subtask, you know, just, uh, just one example uh, created by uh, manual trigger. Of course, we did something similar using uh, the transition and we also did something similar. I mean, you can do a lot of these things using post uh, using scriptner, post function and also using automation, but uh, uh, that has to be tied up to your workflow. But you can, using this rule, it is outside workflow and you can trigger it whenever you want. Now you can add maybe one more subtask. So created by manual trigger and save it and uh, maybe let us add few more components so let us say you also want to add a comment I, I, I quite like adding comments because uh, it is easy and uh, you can uh, see what you have just uh, done uh, so what maybe you know what we can do is uh, we can uh, just write uh, manual trigger now this is great and uh, uh, if you want to know more about uh, these smart values, I have been talking about these smart values. You can always take a look at this uh, uh, this particular page. For example, if uh, you're talking about uh, the tri the manual trigger, maybe you want to know uh, who triggered, who ran this rule. For example, if you take a look at the smart value, there is something called as, uh, I believe, uh, initiator. So it says the user, the user who triggered the rule. So let us try this. Let us copy this and uh, you can go back to your rule and uh, you can uh, manual trigger, triggered by this user, initiator. And uh, you, you, may, you may want to display the name. Uh, so let us first display everything like initiator and uh, let us also display the name. So let us say, I just want to see what all we get in the initiator. It is a, of course a user. So let us save it. And we have two things that we're doing with this manual trigger. The name of the trigger is a manual hyphen trigger hyphen rule because I want to use hyphens. And uh, you can now go to an issue, literally an issue. Of course, whatever trying, whatever you're trying to do, let us say you're trying to create a subtask or adding a comment or any, any other thing that you're doing it has to be valid for that particular issue. So if you're trying to create a subtask, that, that subtask issue type should be there. Just trying to share a few things. So we, we are looking at one bug. 
Now, if you wait for this particular issue to completely load, which is now loaded, you will see this automation option here on the right hand side. And if you click on the run button, it will now run the automation on this issue. And we will wait for uh, maybe just a couple of seconds and we have a message on top called issue updates available. Now the good thing about these uh, manual triggers are, uh, as I mentioned, they are, they are outside workflow. So maybe you don't really want to create an additional transition or uh, something in the workflow, or maybe you want to keep your workflow neat and clean. So I think this, this can be a good option. So refresh the issue and let us refresh the issue and let us take a look at these uh, things that we have just done. For example, I can immediately see uh, that we have this, uh, this, um, these two subtasks, these two subtasks added. And we also have this manual trigger triggered by the user ID, I believe, account ID and uh, my, my name, which is of course me. And you can do a lot of wonderful things. Maybe you want to assign it. I mean, when, when you have the account ID, you can do something else. Like maybe you want to assign it to, maybe you want the issue to be assigned to this user who triggered this, uh, this particular uh, automation rule or basically whatever you want to do. So I thought I'll probably share this uh, with all of you. And uh, that is all I wanted to talk about and share in this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today. Thank you very much.